If you've got a massive jungle ahead of you and you've got to get through it, what's the fastest way? What's up guys? It is still winter in Ohio. There's a lot of snow outside, which is depressing for any driver, which means the motorcycle, this Aston and that Viper are not going anywhere. ZR rated tires that are this wide in the snow, <laughs> just doesn't work. But I got an email here and this person writes, Hey Casey, my name is Ali. I am a new graduate coming from a high school in Maryland with a vision of building an electric car company. In high school, I never had the best grades, but I still had and have a passion for cars, both gas and electric. My passions for cars developed when I watched Speed Racer as a child, but I'm not sure where to start learning more about cars, for obvious reasons, that I am not mechanically inclined. I've been watching YouTube videos, and I've gone to numerous mechanic shops, and they all turned me down. I was wondering if you could give me any info on where I can start, with the possibility I may not be going to college within the year. I've been seeing your videos on VinWiki and now felt compelled to ask you if there was something you did when you were younger to learn. Thanks, Ali. Ali, yes! Yes, there was. And don't fret, because I got you covered. Now, first of all, a lot of billionaires either never went to college or dropped off. Out. And those are self-made billionaires, not family money. So don't freak out. At the end of the day, it really comes down to how smart you are, how ingenuitive you are, and uh, what you can do with your resources and put that together in a way that is constructive and hopefully valuable to your life and others. So let's get you started. Now, where to learn? Obviously, schools are basically businesses. They cost money. Unless, of course, you go to Genius Garage and some crazy philanthropic loony wants to teach you for nothing, but that doesn't happen very often. And until you can come by, um, we gotta, gotta figure this out for you. So what did I do when I was younger? I learned from, in no particular order, building radio control cars uh, and breaking them and then having to fix them. <laughs> I learned from slot cars, which are also great. And uh, what else? Bicycles. Bicycles are fantastic. Don't forget, that's where the Wright brothers started out, okay? So anything that you can get hands-on with, whether it's an old bicycle, a slot car, radio control car, you know, all that stuff in the real world that's not actually in an app is going to help you. Because the best driving force in you learning anything is you. They say that necessity is a mother of invention. And by the way, I hope you don't mind. I'm actually going to work on this car while we're talking. They say necessity is the mother of invention. So if you like cars, if you like mechanical things, well, find something. Go out and get it. Whether it's a cheap bicycle or an old toy that's broken, fix it up. And as you, as you go, uh, make a little money, get some tools. Maybe you go to an old swap meet and buy old tools. Do what you got to do. Um, start somewhere. Borrow if you must. And the thing about this is, all these things create a portfolio. I literally have an old friend of mine who, when he went to school, got a much bigger and better scholarship for aerospace engineering because of how much he did with radio control airplanes. And it wasn't just that he went out and bought kits and spent a lot of money, it's that he found plans on the internet. And he, you know, scrounged old material and such and borrowed tools to build incredible airplanes and, you know, uh, engineering machines and such. There's so much that a person can do with so little if you just put your mind to it. I mean, people throw away incredible materials. Can you imagine what it'd be like to go dumpster diving at NASA? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so this is the sort of thing that's out there. So you just got to think, what do I want to do? Where do I want to have fun? So, you know, get out there and do it. Now, the other thing that's neat about a lot of these old things, whether they're old toys, slot cars, bicycles, etc., if you're smart about what you buy, maybe you'll be like a, you know, <laughs> Benwicky Strood negotiator or something like that, and you fix it up, and you put in less resources and time than the outcome value is worth, you might be able to turn a profit and start trading up, and that's very helpful. So, you know, keep those things in mind. Um, with regard to, let's see, you like Speed Racer. Hey, I relate to that. I have a feeling you watch the new movie, and I watch reruns of the old cartoon, but these things are very inspiring. But Ali, your big question was, how do you start an electric car company? Where do you get started? How do you make that dream when it seems a million miles away? Because you're worried about not going to school, you don't have that much experience, maybe you don't have the resources, and that seems so far away. But it's not. You just have to figure out how to get there, a roadmap, where to go. So think of it like this. If you've got a massive jungle ahead of you, and you've got to get through it, what's the fastest way? Well, find a river or find a path that an animal 
already walked on for years and years and years. Do you know what I'm saying? You, you don't have to just go through it blindly. So I'm going to help you out. So here's the thing. First of all, an electric car company is a car company. It's huge. Elon Musk, what did he do? Sell PayPal, made like $130 million, put his own money in it, bought the Roadster concept where he took a Lotus Elise, electrified it in small batch numbers, and then sold those to rich people, and then eventually got enough rich people that liked him and investors that he started building a car company, and he was a cultural leader. So that's how he's effectively done what he's done now. But you're a littler guy than that. So until you build a PayPal-like thing and have tons of money, what are you gonna do? Either way, you still have to be smart. So here's what I'm gonna tell you. First of all, design cars. It doesn't cost you much to have paper and pencils. Design it, figure out how it makes them work, okay? Now, something I wanna clue you in, I'm gonna give you the best tip ever. Are you listening? Anybody else? It's not about the power plant, okay? You're not gonna just sell cars because it has a V12 in it. You're not gonna just sell cars because they're electrified in the future. That's already being done. So what makes your car more special? Forget the power plant. Is it recyclable? Is it affordable? Where does it fit a need? Are you just building something that's first world problems or does it work in a second and third world country? Does it work as well in the mountain roads of Mongolia as it does in London or San Francisco? Does it work in Montana? Does it work in Mexico? What are you building? Is your car company aimed at one specific thing or lots? So think about that. What is the car? Because since the 1930s, we've been building cars as stamped steel boxes with an engine in it and like chairs bolted in. Come on, since the 1930s. It really hasn't changed much. Think about that. So, and you can electrify your car you want. You can power it by natural gas. You got a teeny tiny nuclear reactor. Or you can make it steam powered. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So your power plant reflects the need in the world where it's at. So if you live somewhere with tons of smog, if you're in London or LA, electric's great, right? But it's maybe not gonna work out in the boonies somewhere. So think about that. Now, how do you get started? Okay, first of all, there's nothing stopping you from building a car, okay? Whether it's full size or scale. So if you, let's say you build a quarter scale car, it's basically radio control size, you could literally test it as a radio control car. All those systems you can miniaturize. If you come up with manufacturing techniques and concepts or experimental materials, you can do those in small structures. It doesn't have to be complex like a whole car. You can start selling your proof of concept. You can always potentially get the engineers to help design your suspension or your monocoque chassis or your drivetrain implementation or your safety or this and blah, blah, blah. But what are your concepts that you're developing? These are all things you can do small with smaller resources, smaller space, maybe even in your house or little garage without having tons of money. And as you get further and further along, you can start developing a portfolio, a business plan, etc. Now, think of this. First of all, let's be honest. Nobody's going to give you or me necessarily like $10 billion tomorrow to just start a giant car company. So how do we start smaller? I'll tell you. You ever heard of Local Motors, the rally fighter? They make a decent amount of cars, vehicles, but effectively they do them as kit cars. In the United States, there's laws where you can build a car, an individual, and then register it for a street and drive it and it doesn't have to meet all the same crash test standards and everything. Now, okay, I know. America freaks out about safety all day long. Just, like, we have to go somewhere with the future in the world. So first of all, do a great job and be excellent at what you do and what you build, and that's the first best safety thing. But what I'm saying is, a kit car, so to speak, the laws for that allow you to make a one-off car and actually go drive it on the street, get it insured, right? As a custom-built car. So that allows you, with little means, to have a prototype and test it. And maybe what you do for your electric car company, your starting off company, you do it as a small company where clients come to you and you start a movement, right? So if you have this cool electric car that's cheaper, but it's only, you know, 40% together. It's like, here's the rolling chassis and here's the drivetrain and the interior, and they pick it out and then the customer comes to your place and over the course of a week or two weeks, they assemble it and build it. And then when they're done, they take their car with all the receipts and stuff and go get it inspected by the state highway patrol somewhere. And they get a title and they get insurance and they go drive it. Think about it, man. There's, way, there's more than one ways to skin a cat even if you don't have huge resources. So look into the uh, custom cars and kit car building worlds. And remember, you can always test your concepts in scale and smaller before you do something big with lesser means. Um, and, you know, if you have a part-time job, save your pennies, trade things up, restore bicycles and sell them, slot cars, all this. There's, where there's a will, there's a way. 
get off the computer, go out there in the real world. Everybody's forgotten about that. And uh, do what you got to to get whatever tools. But uh, hey man, you can always write me another question. I look forward to uh, talking over with you. So I hope you guys all enjoyed this. Subscribe, send me questions. I'll see you next time.